Hi, thanks so much for joining me today. So my name is Lexi Jong and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to go over the Clay de Poe Correcting Cream Veil Broad Spectrum SPF 21 Sunscreen. And this is promoted as a primer and its major claims are for skin smoothing and easier application and longevity to your makeup. So it does not say that it blurs pores or anything like that. When it talks about smoothing, it specifically says to kind of tap the product into like your wrinkles or um, any lines that you kind of want to smooth out. And so you would like tap it in and let it dry that way instead of like rubbing it in or applying with a brush. So um, that's just something to note there. So let me show you guys what this is like. So here is the product. It has, you know, kind of like a light beigey tan color to it, but it's more white. So it's white with just like a slight beigey tint. Please excuse the swatches. I did a get ready with me video just before this and I haven't been able to get those swatches off yet. I have to really scrub to get this off. So when you blend out the primer, you can see it has this really pretty sheen to it. Um, you know, it's got a really nice kind of sheeny, satiny finish to it. But one thing to note is it does have like a little bit of a whitening effect. So the major sunscreen ingredients in here are, there's 1% insulazole, 2.9% uh, octanoxate, and 2.4% titanium dioxide. So as we all know, the titanium dioxide, you know, often leaves a white cast. If you were to wear this sunscreen on its own without any makeup over it, there is a definite white cast to it. And, um, you know, you get that like white cast look in like a photo or something as well. Since you are wearing makeup over this, ideally, <laughs> since it's a primer, then, uh, you know, the white cast is an issue. However, I have noticed that it does lighten the looks of any foundations or products that I put on over that. So if you have a foundation that is slightly too dark and you put this on underneath, it could end up being the perfect color. So more things about the packaging. This is 37 milliliters or 1.4 ounces, and it is made in the USA. And I believe it retails for $80 if I remember correctly. So I have been using this on and off for the last several months. At first I thought it was just like four or five weeks and then I actually went back and looked at when I first started using this and it's actually been about two and a half, almost three months. So I just haven't used this every day and um, I'm gonna go through my thoughts at the end of the video, but first I have a clip showing a wear test. So please feel free to stay tuned for that. If you're not interested, timestamps are down below, so feel free to take a look at those and skip to what you are interested in. Thank you. Okay, so for today's wear test, I am going to apply the primer to the right side of my face and the left side, I will leave without primer. Now I do have skincare on and sunscreen. I used the new Biosan sunscreen. I'll have the name of that down below. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, yeah, th that was applied a few hours ago. So it's now 12 o'clock and um, I guess I applied everything around 8.30 this morning. So it's been on for a few hours and my skin is you know, slightly tacky due to the sunscreen right now, very moisturized feeling. All right, so here is the um, correcting veil and it's basically a very, very light tan beige color, um, not quite white. So there is a little tint of color in there. And you know, apply this, you know, honestly it feels, you know, thick like most sunscreens. Um, and the purpose of this, it says to take a little bit and when you have, where you have like fine lines and so forth, to tap it on there. 
and the purpose is to kind of not necessarily blur but smooth it so which is you know kind of essentially the same thing but instead of you know promoting a blurring effect this says that it's basically going to smooth things out and make it apply better for make your makeup apply better and last longer so we will see I'm gonna let this sit for a second and then I'll apply some foundation. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so it's been about a minute and you can see that the side with the primer is a little bit more white than um, the side without anything. So the sunscreen um, components in here do have like a little bit of a white cast, which obviously is not gonna be so noticeable on somebody with um, skin tone like mine, but on darker skin tone, there may be a white cast. So for foundation today, I'm going to use the Surratt Dewdrop Foundation and I use shade one and a half and just gonna apply it to this little plate here. So I used to use this for mixing makeup all the time and broke one, I had two of them and just have left it downstairs until recently, so. Okay, so to apply the foundation, I use the Guerlain Essentiel foundation brush, and this is what the two sides look like now with foundation. And we're gonna let this sit for a minute. I'm gonna apply some concealer, and then we'll take a closer look. Okay, so I'm gonna come in closer, so don't be scared, but this is the side without the primer. And you can see, you know, you can still see some of the redness in my cheeks, but you can see a little bit here, but not as much as the side without the primer. So the, I think the white cast kind of helped mask some of the redness for me, but they are pretty similar. Application wise, they both went on just as smooth um, as each other. No real difference in application. And I feel like they both look pretty much the same. I don't really, aside from the masking of the redness, I don't see any real difference anywhere else. So, okay, so this is what we are going to be starting off with for today. So again, this side does not have the clay to Peau primer. And this side does. And at the moment, there doesn't really seem to be any real difference between the two. So I will be back to check in later. Thanks. Okay, so it has been six hours now since I applied. And again, this right side of my face is the one with the clay de Peau primer on it. And honestly, everything looks pretty much the same. Um, I can't really tell any difference. I do have some like caking of the foundation here in my little 11 mark. <laughs> um, but I don't remember whether I had you know, the, the primer on there or not. And honestly, I don't think that's a big deal because the lines are on my lips and so forth and around my eyes, actually on both sides. No, there's no accumulation of foundation in the other spot on my face. I went in with a magnifying mirror and honestly, it looks the same on both sides so far. So I'll be back later for a final check-in. Thanks. Okay, so it's now been just over 10 hours since I applied the um, foundation and primer, and I just wanted to give you guys a final update. So I looked very closely at my skin with a lighted magnifying mirror, and honestly, both sides look pretty much the same to me. I can't really visually see a difference. I have a little bit of caking here in this line and a little bit here on this side. So they look pretty similar. I'm gonna get up close so you guys can kind of see everything. Even around the nose, it looks the same. This is the side without the primer. And this is the side with the primer. And even the forehead, it still looks the same as it did um, earlier in the day. Around the lips, it looks as though it's the foundation has pretty much worn off here and yeah, that's basically it. So um, one thing to note, 
the side without the primer does feel a little bit oilier, a little greasier. Um, however, to be fair, um, the side with the primer does feel a little oily as well, but not as much as without. Uh, and I think a lot of that is because this primer feels very much like sunscreen and it does have sunscreen in it. So, you know, it just has more of that, that feeling that has kind of bled through a little bit. So, um, it was definitely more mattified earlier in the day and that is starting to bleed through. However, the side without the primer, um, would probably start breaking down, um, pretty soon at this point. Again, it's been 10 hours, and, but I expect the side without the primer to start breaking down prior to the one with the primer. Um, so that's basically it for this. I have some more things to follow up with and I will uh, see you soon. Thanks. Okay, so hopefully the wear test was helpful for you. Overall, I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on this. Now, I think of this more as a sunscreen than a primer. For me, I don't really notice any additional smoothing or ease of application when I wear this as a primer. I am wearing it today, and I think of this more as a light sunscreen for the face. So on a day where I'm really concerned about sun protection, this is not a product I would reach for. I have used this many times now, and I've used it in many different combinations. So I've layered this with other sunscreens. I have worn it with a variety of different foundations and tinted moisturizers and so, so forth. It has layered well with all of them. I haven't had any issues with, you know, any pilling or balling of the product or anything else. I haven't had any um, breakdown of product that I've applied over this. So, you know, this product has worked really well underneath everything that I have tested with it. I've also used this on its own and there's a definite white cast when you wear it on its own. Again, it is meant to be a primer, so it's not meant to be worn alone. Um, but just a note that it is, I mean, on my skin <laughs> to look white, <laughs> that says something. So I'm um, sure that's the titanium dioxide. Now, um, when I am using this on a regular basis, I, as I mentioned, I have layered this with other sunscreens. This feels like a sunscreen on the skin. So it's a little bit thicker than some primers. It has like a little bit heavier sunscreen feeling to the skin. And I personally just don't like the way it feels when I layer it with other sunscreens because I feel like it, it just feels like too many products on my face. It, it feels too thick to me. So I will be using this on days when I'm not as concerned about sunscreen. So maybe I'm staying in, it's you know dark and rainy out, things like that. Uh, and that's when I'm going to utilize this. This is not my favorite primer. So would I repurchase this? And no, I have no plans of repurchasing this in the future. When I bought this, I thought this was uh, new. <laughs> um, it, and basically, I think they changed the cap on this. The packaging is different a little bit than the older one. But from what I can tell online, this is the exact same formula that was out before. And people love this. You know, this has a lot of positive reviews online. Um, but for me, it's just a sunscreen. Um, you know, if I'm going to spend the time and the additional step to put a primer on, I want to see some additional benefits to my skin, such as pore blurring or, you know, maybe just like a smoother application. And that's what this claims is the smoother application and longevity to your makeup look while still providing SPF protection. Um, but unfortunately, I just don't notice any additional smoothing and it feels a little heavy on my skin. So I just, it's not something I'm going to reach for, especially during the summer when I'm most concerned about sunscreen. Um, I'm going to use a separate sunscreen because this is only SPF 21. And I definitely like to use a at least 30 on my face. So um, yeah, this is just, you know, it's just not something I'm gonna reach for. Um, I will definitely use up this whole bottle, but $80 for a sunscreen with no other noticeable benefits to me, I think is not worth it. So, so that sums up my opinions on this product. 
I think it is an okay sunscreen, but I don't consider it a primer. For me, I'm still really enjoying the Seurat Perfectionist Primer. This does a great job lowering my pores and it feels weightless on the skin, which is something I really enjoy. And I think I'll be enjoying it even more during the warmer weather that's coming um, as my T-zone starts to get oilier. So, um, that is everything. I hope this video was helpful. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them down below. And I know this product actually gets a lot of love. So if you have a different experience from mine or, you know, even the same experience, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments section. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great safe and healthy day. Thank you.